Hello and welcome. I am your host, TNT, Tara Nicole Tarber, and we are watching Supernatural Lifeline Revelations. Today, I am really, really amazed that I was actually able to get Miss Josanne Marie to be on the show because you have some wonderful information that is going to be given to you, knowledge, wisdom, and if you've ever wondered where your missing link is, she definitely found what hers was and how to find purpose in it. So I have today on my show, Miss Josanne Marie. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Now, I'm holding your book, and I've not been able to put it down. You have so many talents that you've, you, from poet, playwright, author, um, actress, advocate, um, you name it, you're it. Um, I remember when I met you, yeah. I was just blown away at your talent and your ability. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I think much. you were doing poetry a lot then. Yes. And yeah, I started out with poetry. Uh, I, I think so. I, yeah. I invited you to come on one of my conferences. conferences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. It's probably like 12 years ago, you guys. But now it's hard to catch up with her because she's so celebrity status, oh, you know. But um, realistically, I yeah. was very intrigued because um, you came out with your book, um, Beautiful, Unshamed, and Unafraid. Yes. And um, growing up in Jamaica, trying to find some missing links and put some pieces to a puzzle, can you explain just how this book came about? what it's about, how people can actually, it's helping people all across the world. Yeah. And let's talk about it. No, definitely. Um, so Beautiful, Unashamed, and Unafraid is about uh, my life overcoming uh, sexual abuse from the age of 6 to 16, so over a 10-year period of time, and how God worked in my life through shame and fear and how to get over that. So it's a spiritual journey about my life coming from Jamaica to the U.S. and having a relationship with God. And how, how old were you? I was 10 when I came to U.S. Okay. Yeah, I was 10 years old. What was old. that transition like for you? Um, wow. I mean, everyone wanted to come in Jamaica. We wanted to come to the U.S., right. you know. As an immigrant, we were like, oh, well, you know, we, f we, we believe the streets were paved with gold here. And you could buy anything for 99 cents. Like, that's a running joke. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, so just like, you know, a place of opportunity and um, growing up for myself, growing up, you know, my mom was mentally ill. I didn't know that until I, I met my mom when I was eight years old. And so just the shame of those things and coming to the U.S. So you didn't hope. meet your mom until you were eight? Yeah, even though I was in Jamaica. I mean, six, I'm sorry. Yeah. So what were those circumstances? Well, my mom had me when she was very young. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't grow up in a household with a mother or father. I grew up with my grandmother and, um, you know, the man that she lived with at mm -hmm. the time. And I always wanted to meet my dad. My dad lived in the U.S. Um, he left when I was one years old. And then I always ask about my mom. And they're like, oh, your mom is sick. You know, they wouldn't introduce me to her. But when I was six, I was very, like, adamant about, like, I want to go and meet my mom. And I didn't know that she had mental illness after mm -hmm. she had me. Mm -hmm. And so meeting her for the first time was the first, as a child, I can remember, was the first time I felt ashamed because she was in a place where there were mentally ill patients. And mm -hmm. those were the, th the, the people kids at times used to make fun of at school. Mm -hmm. So I just remember going, I don't want anyone to know that my mom is, you know, um, you know struggling with mental illness. So I told them she lived in Florida. <laughs> and that was a story for a long time, you know. And I talk about that in the book, about how we can, you know, because a lot of times I think mental illness you know, can be demonized right, in a way. Right, right, and very much so. people kind of brush it to the side. A lot of shame is attached to it, and no one wants to talk about it. So I talk about that in the book, like how can we, you know, um, turn that conversation and narrative around. Um, so, you know, Beautiful basically started off as a play before a book. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Lord just really put it on my heart to do this one-woman show. And so I decided to write a one-woman show, I played 16 characters, and I just took a step of faith, and I go, you know what, I'm going to share my, the story of how God brought me to forgiveness and healing through this testimony. And I put it on, and I didn't know that four years later I was going to continue to do the play. Like, he just took it to a whole nother level. And so the book came out of the fact that after the show, we have a talk back, and people in the audience would stand up and just tell their story. And I'll tell you one story that really changed the whole 
conversation for me because at first you start doing it as a performance, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to encourage people, but you don't realize that it's a universal stage and it's much bigger than you. Like, it's not even about you, you right. know? And I remember the last night of my show, a 74-year-old Jewish woman walked up to me. And when she walked up to me, she said, um, you know, she goes, Young lady, when I was eight years old, I was raped. And tonight is the first time I'm telling anyone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I just started crying. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, this woman waited 66 years yes. to mm. share a secret and the weight and the, the depth of that. And I, I, it, it just really affected me in a different way about the beautiful story that many women and men have gone to their graves with shame and things that, you know, our Heavenly Father really wants to take. take. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes, you know? I'm with you. So, ah. And so that was one of the main reasons that inspired me to write the book. You know, um, you know, People said sometimes, oh, I wouldn't tell all your story, but in the truth of my story has brought the healing and which has brought my ministry. Yes. Um, I was like, I don't even know any other way to preach but to be honest with my people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a time I felt ashamed of certain things. Yeah. So I just turned around and just took the bat out the devil's hand and was like, yeah. this is no longer someplace you can hit me with. Yeah. And I remember when God removed the shame. And as a Christian for so long, having shame and dealing with shame is um, mm. a reality. You're in a, bo a box of bondage until. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't want anybody to know no. <laughs> that exactly. you did this thing. Right. And there's always like somebody that knows. Of course. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> somebody always knows. Yeah. Even whether it's the perpetrator or whoever, somebody knows. Yeah. And you're in New York, like, it's like, if, it's like peekaboo little kids. Like, if I don't see you, you don't see me. Like, they can't see <laughs> that right. you're bleeding, you know? Right. And uh, I found that once I got delivered of my shame, like I, mm. I went through with the last divorce I went through, and it was like, oh, you're getting divorced again, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's this thing in the in the church about divorce, you know? Mm -hmm. And people think they know the story, but they, right. they don't live they with don't they know the story. Really know, exactly. Right? But I really <laughs> yeah. felt like God did it. Yes. First of all, I went to this church. I'm at my church with Prophet Lovi. Um, he goes, everything is not like God. Everything is not for you. And I, we just we just remove it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And like, I didn't think that it meant like the person I had just got married to. So I was like, I thought this time was it, God. Right. I'm not having sex before marriage. I'm trying to do everything. What is this? And, and it was so amazing because I knew God did it. Mm. He told me what was going to happen before it even happened. I prophetically knew everything. Wow. And he said, pick your head up and keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah. And I remember having a feeling from here to here, it felt like something was physically like tingling on me, almost like it wants to be anxiety, but I wasn't yeah. letting it in yeah. this time because I knew it was God. Yeah. And there's a peace when I know God is with me and I know that he's leading me. Yeah. And I know he didn't want me with this person. And people could say, oh my God, God doesn't cause divorce. I'm right. like, look here, let me tell you something. Right. <laughs> I got freedom in the word of God yeah. with um, uh, Samson. Mm. because it says that he married this woman, the, Phil the Philistine woman, yeah. and they said, the parents were like, there's no other women among us. Why would you go to this Philistine woman? The Bible said, that, but they did not know it was of the Lord. When mm. people say, well, if it was God, it would work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God knew that that marriage wasn't going to work out. No, totally. And he still got, it got him to do something that God wanted him to do. Yeah. And so it gave me, I was like, it's in the Bible the whole time. Oh my goodness. And <laughs> yes. so I got yeah. the church religion shame off of me. Come on. I don't care what you think about me. I'm in my calling. And they said things like, well, if you were in our denomination, you would be sat down. There's no way they could let you preach. You mean to tell right. me because I've been divorced a few times. I can't get, right. I can't preach. I can't minister. I can't right. teach. And so there was this stigma the that box. religion yeah. was putting me on. In a box and I said yeah. wait a minute but that time when God freed me mm. I, I that that I, the feeling I felt here the next week it was here the next week it was here the next week it was there and then it just like the fifth week it was just gone yeah so I kept moving forward and I knew I was in the will of God and I had comfort in the Lord mm. and I was okay with the circumstance yeah and I was okay with the situation and I remember I was like 
I don't care what anybody says. I didn't explain myself to anybody. That's right. I did not go on <laughs> yeah. and put an announcement on social media. Any pictures there were, I just removed them and kept on going. And then, the, the, you know, the, you get the looky loos <laughs> after about three or four months. Right. And they start, they start inboxing you. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, how's your husband doing? <laughs> oh, this, and I'm just like, and you just say, everything's good. You don't even say, everything's great. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. And finally, somebody says, well, I haven't seen any pictures like, to what they're really wanting, no you know. Thing. And I was yeah. just like, everything yeah. is well. Yeah. And I didn't feel the need to give a reason. Yeah. And I didn't yeah. feel the need for the first time. Mm. And I've been saved for 16 years yeah. to explain myself. Of course. And I didn't. And you know what? Yeah. And somebody said one time, well, you need to call and tell somebody what really happened. I said, let me tell you, I'm not going to do that. No. Because if those who are really for me. Yeah. I need to know who's for me. Of course. And I, you know, I, I got delivered and I moved into a place yeah. of peace and I learned, moved into a blessed state of time in my life that mm. I had never experienced before. Yeah, yeah. I, no. And yeah. so when I see yeah. that you're unafraid and you're beautiful oh, and all, all my scars are beautiful yes. and every one of them has a story yes. and God knew I was going to have these scars, I am so okay with this. Oh, that's, that's powerful. Yeah, and, and yeah, you know, yeah. and if you have a problem, yeah. that's your problem. <laughs> right. I don't have that problem anymore. Yeah. So I love to see yeah. that you have come out and you faced your issue and you talked about it and people are coming forth and they're giving yeah. you, and it's not even that they're giving you their issue, they're giving them, you their words and the freedom God has, God has took yeah. it and he's bringing freedom to people. Yeah. I love what you just said because a lot of times, you know, they have a saying that when you speak out, it gives other people permission to speak out as well. Yes. And so a lot of times, even like your story, you know, I mean, there are thousands of women, I'm sure, who are struggling with the same thing. And they feel like they're the only one, you know? For me, it was and like, again? <laughs> like, it would be different yeah. if I'm like sleeping around. And no, totally. Trying to, I am literally living that life, you know, like yeah. that says, this is supposed to be life to bring the person that I has. Finally, I got to the place where, you know what, I'm whole without somebody and I'm whole okay. Yeah. And if God wants to bring somebody, that's okay. But like I go to sleep with joy and peace and I'm in purpose and I'm passion. Yeah. And it's people like you that encourage those things and find so much peace in the midst of what looks like to everybody else yeah. a storm. Yeah. I decided yeah. I was going to write about it. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I, 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 I did. I, oh, you I, did? I, 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 well, okay. I just, I got the cover made. Okay. I just have it. it was, because I literally, I saw your book and I saw a couple of others and I was like, oh, I'm going to tell you. it. Like, I'm going to address it before somebody else tries to even no. address it. Because you're going to get it wrong even if no. you do try. So let me just address yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, and no, I just thank love you. it. Thank um, you. What is returning to love? It's on chapter 15. Mm. Um, you know, it starts off with the journey of life can be filled with dead ends and detours. We lose our way from the original plan and purpose God ordained for our lives. These obstacles challenge our faith and leave us disoriented about who we are. Yeah. Tell me about this returning to the love chapter. Wow. So return to love deals with returning back to God uh -huh. and returning to the Father and returning to love and wholeness. Mm. You know, I felt like for many years after my abuse with my dad, I also end up in relationships that was also abusive and continue the cycle because I was searching for the love and the thing that was empty inside of me in the wrong faces and the wrong places. And God had brought me to an end of myself that nothing, nothing, I mean, as an actor, it didn't matter how many shows I book, it didn't matter where I go, there was something inside of me that still said that this was not enough. Yes. That God needed to be enough. And so Return to Love was where I came face down in front of the Lord, like gave up everything. I walked away from the industry, um, gave up my apartment, I mean, just gave up everything and said, God, here I am. And I wanted to know him in a different way besides just him being my savior, but more my Lord and what yes. that really meant for me. Yes. And that really transformed my life in such a great way because it brought me to a place of peace. It, I felt a love. I had a really supernatural encounter with the Lord that really, when I was in his presence, 
it was, you know, we hear about it in scripture, right? And we, we talk about it. But for me, that experience that day, I was in the prayer room and the Lord visited me on my, I was on a fast on the 12th day of my fast. Right. And the presence of the Lord came over me almost as if I was seeing him face to face. That's the best way I could say it. And in that, which felt like a thousand years, but probably was a millisecond, I experienced the most love, deep love and joy. Like I wasn't aware of my sin. Yes. I wasn't aware of shame. Yes. I wasn't aware of regret, pain. Mm. Everything disappeared in that moment, mm. you know? And once I was able to return to love with God and really see myself in him the way he saw me, then I was available to extend that to others and not be dependent yeah. on the need to have other people to, you know, make me feel better or think I'm beautiful or love me to some level, you know. And so that's what that chapter is, is returning to love means return to God, return to the Father. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming back, I just can hear, as you're talking that song yeah. from Cody Carnes, when he says, coming back to where we started, mm. where I first fell in love. Yes. You know, coming back to my I creator. Listen to, I listen to that song all the time. It's the craziest oh, thing. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, yes. And you just felt like you're like, right there with him yeah because in his presence everything is whole and healed and made right and yeah. um there's a song by worship mob and and she just starts singing in the middle of the song you make every wrong thing right mm. and i was just like he died for our transgressions yeah yeah our punishments he bore them yeah yeah. The mistakes we made are already taken up by him <laughs> yes. and when we realize that yeah. it's like this yeah. shame was removed. If my mom and dad are still mad about it, that's not my problem. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've done, I, especially if you've walked out successfully and you always got this one skeleton yeah. in your closet, this one thing that they know you by. Right. You were 20 years old when you did it and they're still talking about it of to course. this day. Yeah. They can't get past that you are past it. Right. And then when you are past it, they're mad that you're past it. Yeah. When it's like, this is not about people pleasing. Is God pleased with me? I need to see myself through his lens. Yes. Ah, oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing now? Well, so right now, so I just recently shot a film in um, Georgia called Quiet in My Town. Um, very amazing film. I can't wait for it to come out. It was supposed to come out, you know, be released this year, but because of COVID-19, yeah. they pushed it back. So I'm looking forward to that. I am working on my second book. Um, I just got a, a contract deal for a digital platform as a writer for content. Wow. So I've been working on that and just like really telling the stories that God placed on my heart. And <laughs> you're such a, t you know, yeah. you're like a modern day, you guys better watch out. This is a modern day Maya Angelou. Like she is a storyteller, you guys. She's such yeah. an awesome poet. Oh, and you. she has an anointing. The grace is on you. Thank it's you, on your life. It's Thank so you. beautiful. I'm, I'm just so glad to have been connected with you still and just to, yeah, to be able to watch here. and see yeah. how God has just blossomed so many things, you know, over the years. I mean, <laughs> when I came to your conference, you know, because you didn't know these things about no. me at that time. So when I came to your conference, you know, God uses everything, you mm. know, and I remember... Um, it was the, the theme kind of was more on more than rubies and you talked about that and that really blessed my soul. So we're all as a body of Christ, just so connected and we help each other, you know, we really yeah. do. We really do. Yeah, I remember amazing. one of my, one of my, my assistants at the time said to me, I love your stories. Now I had, I thought I had some great stories then. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like, you need some new testimonies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I think about her saying that right now all the time. Yeah. Because, boy, did I get some testimony. <laughs> oh, no. At the last 10 years yeah. have been, I mean, it could have killed a lot of people. Mm. It really could have. Yeah. And my old, my second daughter, she's 20, uh, 20 she'll be 24, uh, 23. Um, wow, well, how old is money? 20, she'll be 24. She'll be, yeah. today. She'll be 24 on Sunday. Okay. And she just came home from college. So she's been gone for six years because she had her wow. master's degree. Wow. And she gets the, 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 Amen. Yeah. God is good. And it was paid for. And so yeah. I was like, thank you, Jesus. So she comes back and my ministry is booming. Yeah. And a couple of my 
my my ministry girls, my spiritual daughters are, are at the house and she's like, oh, I love her. Oh, <laughs> I love her too. Yeah. Mom, what is going on here? <laughs> like all the spiritual kids are on fire. She's like, I need to catch up. What is going on? Yeah. yeah. Now she's having experiences. She's up praying. She's up reading. Wow. She's got her friends are getting touched. And she said, Mom, like you used to always say, God had you. Everything was okay. Everything was okay. Mm -hmm. It didn't look okay when you were saying it as well. It's like the Shumanite woman. Mm -hmm. It is well. Right. It, <laughs> it is well. well. <laughs> it is well. Yeah. It is well. I promise yeah. it is well. And yeah. so she was able to see. And so now she's like, it's like you're in this rest. Mm. She's like, everything you said is happening. Oh, wow. And it's wow. so exciting because God had to show her. Yeah. Yeah. I always knew God had me. Yeah. No matter what it looked like, that knower that yeah. like I'm in his will still. Yeah. And like, I've had people say, well, you're out of his will. You don't know what his will is for my life. And yeah. I, you know, the best revelation was that when Jesus came down here, he emptied himself, yeah. which means he had to forget yeah. and erase his memory yeah. of who he was and how everything ended and what was happening. He had yeah. to grow when he came here yeah. and back into his relationship with the Father. He had to re-remember that he has, he could have this connection. He had to get there for himself. Yeah. Well, he said before he formed us in the womb, he knew us. Yes. So we actually, he said, so if, if, if before the foundations of the earth, Christ was crucified. Yeah. And the Bible says I'm seated in heavenly places. That means that I also agreed for this. <laughs> that right. also means that I yeah. had to erase my memory and come down here. Mm. And I chose the same walk. It's always a comparison yeah. at just as I have done this, yeah. just as I have. So I have, I, we are re-remembering this journey. And one day yeah. prophetically something happened to me, Josanne. Yeah. This lady looked at me and said, God wants me to tell you something. I'm like, uh-huh, well, okay, I don't really know you, but okay. <laughs> and she's like, God said you signed up for this. And something immediately, oh my goodness, happened where my mind was, I was for, a, it wasn't even a blink of an eye, it wasn't even a hot second. Yeah. I was there and here at the same time. And I knew, I saw myself there and here. Yeah. And I knew what she said was true, that wow. I signed up for this. Yeah. And it empowered me in a way that, you mean to tell me I selected this? You mean to tell me I chose to erase my mind and come yeah. down here and find my way back to the Father? Yeah. You mean that? That means to tell me that I have the victory, that it's yes. already done, <laughs> that it's already, I've already finished. I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm watching myself walk this thing out. That means I can, I can tap into the spirit realm and yeah. get answers and questions and things. No, totally. And I had a new power that was given to me yeah. when I realized I'm doing the same thing Jesus did. I'm thing. finding my way back to the Father. <laughs> I'm killing my flesh. Something has to die for yeah. something else to live. And this is all yeah. purpose. And it's a story, and I'm yeah. bringing, and I'm winning souls. And for one person that was able to die, he was able to raise up many sons. Of and look at what we're doing. You're, you're touching souls. Unless the seed souls. falls to the ground and dies. <laughs> uh. Right? Yeah. And, and, you know, I want to emphasize, because one of the things about that I hear people ask a lot, why does bad things happen to good people? And we live our life where we use a tragic event to become the story. Right. Rather than saying, it's a comma, it's not a period. Ah. Okay? Um, Go ahead. So God uses all things. And that's one of the things that I came to the understanding in my own testimony was that my life was on purpose, regardless of what people thought. Yes. What, regardless of even what I thought, you know? On purpose. Um, on in purpose. purpose. Right. Intentional. <laughs> you know? Yes. And God uses, uses sometimes the craziest, gnarly things. Even your mistakes. To reveal himself. Yeah. You know? And so that's something that I really want to encourage people that our beautiful, you know, it says in Ecclesiastes 3.11, God has made all things beautiful mm. in its time. Yes, and I believe beautiful is a place of maturity. Like we have mm. the physical beautiful, like the beautiful <laughs> right here. Oh, this beautiful. You know? this and then we have like the beautiful of Christ that is shining through us. And it's a maturity that people, you, if you have spiritual eyes, you'll get to see. Yes. And a lot of times we want to rush the process, ah. you know, and God and is like. And we can skip something. It's like when you're pregnant and at three months, you're like, I'm over it already. Well, you can't just decide you're going to have this baby <laughs> at three months. Right. Uh, you can't just decide with the... With Can the, that happen with, to me, though? <laughs> right? No. You can't just decide that the butterfly that went into the cocoon, yeah. I'm going to open this up and help mm -hmm. it out. 
because in the struggle, it's strengthening its 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 wings yeah. so that it can fly. Yes. And so as it's pushing its way out, yes. and it, it is it's flying, even drying its wings and, and all yeah. of it, it's a necessity for it to be able to fly and yes. to survive and to live. And we can't help it out. Yeah. If we can't, we can't, we can't help, help it out. out. Yeah. And, and, and I can't mm. expedite this thing. I have to walk oh. through the valley and the shallow depth and, and fear no evil for her thou art with me. Yeah. Before I can get to where my, my cup runneth over, before I can get to where goodness and mercy that they followed me yeah. all the days of my life. But yeah. then remembering he's with me in the storm. He's with me in the rain. He's with me in every heartache. He's with me in every pain. He is the fourth man in the fire. He's the mm. one that shuts the, the lion's uh, mouth that he is not going to leave me nor forsake me. Yeah. And I, I just, it, but what it does is it gives us the ability to have trust in him. Yes. He's coming through every time. Yeah. He's, he's not going to forget me. Yes. He's not going to really, he's not going to forget you. He's not going to forsake you. He's not going to treat you like, man, oh, you, you screwed up the seventh time today. <laughs> right. He still calls you a righteous man. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and they may be done with you, but he's not done with you. Yeah. You know, they might not want you around, but he wants you around. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It's funny because in your last segment when you, they were talking about father and one of the things that God always bring back to my memory is that Josanne, before you're anything, you're a child of God. Mm. And that is unshakable. Ah. And so even when you're saying about, you know, trying to, um, you know, people, people want you to, you know, explain yourself. It's like before I'm anything, I'm a child of God, <laughs> you know, and that's the most important role <laughs> in everyone's, everyone's life. life. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know. Where can we get your book? Where do we find you? Where do we connect with you? Sure. So my book is on Amazon. You could also find it at um, josannemarie.com. I'm on my website. And I'm on social media across the board as Josanne Marie, which is J-O-Z-A-N-N-E, Marie. Um, and yeah, check out the book. It will change your life. <laughs> awesome. You heard it right here. So we are beautiful, ashamed, unashamed, and unafraid by Josanne Marie. I'm really excited. Thank you for our conversation. Thank I love you, you so much. I I'm so glad Thank that you, we have connected. Karen. We yes. stay connected. Yes. You know, I feel yes. like it's the last time I saw you. Like there was no distance. Right. Between exactly. It. That's what happens when you really love someone. Uh, yeah. You are watching Thank Supernatural you, Life, Lion Revelations, and we are talking about being unashamed and being naked before God and returning back to the Father. And I thank God for my my guest today. Uh, remember that your timeline is somebody else's lifeline. Please share, tag, invite, follow us on Instagram. If you need a one-on-one, -on -one, you can. Call Contact me at lifelinetnt.org or join our free Wednesday classes. Go to the website. We want to hear from you. Please share, tag, and invite. You're watching Supernatural Lifeline Revelations. I'm Prophetess TNT, Tara Nicole Tarver, throwing out this lifeline. God bless.